Uh, just recently, I saw a video made by Entropy102, uh, who's actually my friend Tony. And he made a video featuring this kappa, pictured here with my mom. Uh, we live in the same city. And when I say we live in the same city, uh, it's not like we both live in Tokyo. We both live in Saga City, which is small enough so that pretty much everybody knows each other. And if you're foreigners in this city, you almost definitely know each other. But um, he took a video with this kappa and was breaking down the kanji for kappa. I highly recommend the video. When it comes to breaking down kanji, Tony is extremely kuashi. Uh, kuashi means knowledgeable. Um, they know all the fine details about things. I don't know very much about breaking down kanji in terms of their radicals. Uh, I think he's much, much better at that kind of thing than I am. But I happen to be very kuashi about yokai, yure, and obakemono, uh, Japanese demons and monsters and spirits. And kappa is uh, my favorite. So I wanted to offer a little bit of correction for some of the things that he said about the kappa and some additions of my own. <clears throat> um, the kappa are extremely popular in Japanese popular culture and folklore, I guess. Um, actually, I got a card today with a kappa on it. You can see the kappa there. But uh, they show up in movies. People still tell stories about them. Um, you can check out, my friends and I went to an onsen, that outside the onsen they had a little kappa fountain park. The whole onsen actually was kappa themed, so they had pictures of kappa inside. Um, but, some facts about the kappa. As Tony mentioned, uh, they do have, one of their distinguishing features is that they have uh, a bowl of water on their head. What he didn't mention is that kappa are abnormally strong for their size, and that that bowl of water is the source of their power. Um, when they're portrayed in movies, they can either be portrayed as cute or scary. It's important to note that kappa are traditionally considered to be aggressive to humans. They like to eat humans and uh, children, and a specific part of humans, which I'll get back to that in a minute. But what they'll do is they'll grab you, they'll pull you into the water and drown you, and then eat you. And if you ever are faced with a kappa attack, you have to know that the water on their head is the source of their power. And if it spills, they lose their strength. And the way to get that water to spill is to bow to them. Kappa are known for being extremely polite. Uh, they also like sport, especially sumo. If you either greet a kappa formally or you challenge a kappa to a sumo match, what you can do is bow very low. And because it's extremely polite, the kappa will feel obliged to bow even lower. And when it bows super low, it spills the water from the top of its head and loses its strength. That's key. So that's one thing I wanted to add. Another is um, the expression you used. I think the expression you wanted was kappa no he. Uh, he, there's actually a kanji for it. It looks like this. And uh, it means fart. So kappa no he is a kappa's fart, which as you said means uh, it's a piece of cake, it's a cinch. I think the reason for that is that um, it's very common in Japanese to identify either very small or very intangible things. Not only is a kappa not a real creature, but if it were a real creature, that fart, that gas that it would pass, would be so intangible that you couldn't consider it a big deal. You couldn't consider it something that you'd have to come up against, I guess. There's a lot of similar expressions like uh, uh, itachi no he, a weasel's fart, or no mi no kintama a flea's balls. They're just things that are so small or so intangible that you don't really take them into consideration. While we're talking about kappa and things that come out of butts, I mentioned I'd get back to a kappa's favorite food. Uh, it has two favorite foods, actually. One of the reasons that it likes to attack and eat people is because it's after your shirikodama. A shirikodama is not a real thing. I don't think it's a real thing. It's a, it's a mythical orb that humans are supposed to have in their butts. You've got this ball, this shirikodama, in your butt. And kappas like to eat that. And they'll pull you into the water, they'll drown you, and then they'll suck that shirikodama out your butt. Um, the reason that people think that is because uh, they used to find drowning victims. And when a body dies, when someone dies from drowning, uh, their body kind of bloats with the water and your rectum will distend and swell. 
And if you were a person who lived in Japan in the old times and didn't have a lot of medical knowledge, looking at that distended rectum on a lifeless drowned body, you might be able to imagine that somebody was sucking on it. This is the weirdest video I've ever made. So there's that. Um, Kappa's other favorite food is cucumbers, which is why they call that sushi the kappa maki. Um, if you are attacked by a kappa, I already told you what to do, bow and it'll bow lower. But if you want to avoid a confrontation with a kappa altogether, what you can do is carve your name in a cucumber. Carve your family's name into a separate cucumber. Any of your loved ones, just carve their name into a cucumber and throw that cucumber into the river where you think the kappa lives, or maybe hang it from a bridge or a tree dangling over the river, and the kappa will accept that cucumber as an offering in place of you or your family. I think those are all of the kappa facts I've got. But uh, Japanese demons and monsters and ghosts, really, really interesting. I know uh, YouTube user Claytonian is also into yokai and bakemono. Um, he writes some stuff on his blogs. There's a really, really good website called the Obakemono Project at obakemono.com. Check that out. They've got all kinds of information about Japanese ghosts and goblins. And uh, if you're interested in those expressions about um, weasel farts and frog piss and flea balls, you can check out this post that I did here on my blog. All right? I do highly recommend Entropy 102's videos. Always, always great to learn a lot of kanji and uh, the little details about them that make them really easy to remember. So check out that video, check out the blog article, and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.